When you dwell on what God says about you, it will automatically clear out the clutter. Fear can't stay where faith is. Discouragement can't stay where hope is. Guilt can't stay where forgiveness is. Mediocrity can't stay where greatness is. Program your mind with what God says about you. God may be giving you more to work with than what you are working with at this time. That's why I don't like to hang with low-thinking people because they'll make you underutilize what God has given you. You need somebody to challenge you that you could be doing more than what you're doing right now. You could have more than you have right now. You could go further than you're going right now. And somebody's got to be bold enough to look you in the face and empower you to go into the enemy's camp and take back what he stole from you. Now listen to me, I don't care if you're sick, I don't care what you're going through. If you're not dead, he ain't through with you yet. As long as you're waking up, you're still in the game. You can still make it happen. As long as that breath in your nostrils boo, you're still in the game. You still can win. Now get your butt up. I want to encourage somebody out there who's thinking about quitting and giving up. Somebody who has been praying for years for things to turn around. You're thinking about quitting, you're thinking about giving up, you are caving in. This is for you. Pick up your damn suffering and bear it and try to be a good person so you don't make it worse. That's what life is like. It's suffering. I'm in a fight for my life. I'm in a fight to be a man. I'm in a fight to be a father. I'm in a fight to be a mama. Something me wants to quit it and walk away. I'm in a fight. Give me somebody. Have you ever just had one of those days when your parachute doesn't open. The race has started, but your gate won't unlock. You can't keep it in the fairway. You just can't keep up. You can't keep your head above water. It's just one of those days. Strive to become the kind of person that people of quality and substance would want to be associated with. Become a person of skillful language, well-read and well-disciplined, positive attitude, a person of culture and intelligence. You will be uniquely rewarded by this reputation, drawing exciting people to you. Remember to attract valuable people. You must be attractive. Association is truly one of the seven fundamentals to your future wealth and happiness. It has such a major effect on how your life works out. You got to go through some things in order for you to get faith. You've got to have some life experiences under your belt so you can talk about how strong your faith is. Because if your faith has never been tested, you can't brag on how strong it is. And if you're not careful, you will allow situations in this life to cloud your perspective. And you will allow moments in this life to take away the hopes and the dreams of tomorrow. Failure, it's not final, it's formative. It's part of the journey. How are you gonna learn if you don't ever fail? Failure is fuel for your future. Failure is a part of your story. The only time you fail is the last time you try. You need to get the right perspective on it because this failure, it will not end in death, but this failure is a part of you being formed. Quit school, quit jobs, quit life, quit friends. Oh, what an urge it is to quit. Don't give up. Stay in it. Stay focused. Sometimes when you enter into a storm, health storms, financial storms, there are all kinds of storms. I'm talking about storms that other people can't see. Storms that make people think you haven't been through anything. Because you get up out of the bed every morning and you put your hair up and, and they don't know you put your smile on just like you did your makeup and, and walked in smiling because you are going through a secret storm. Has anybody ever gone through a secret storm? What you want is a powerful motivator, but the reason why you want it is an even more powerful motivator. It has greater pull. You may find that some of your goals you thought at first glance were important are not important after all. Do some reflecting, refining, and revising. The joy is not in the success, the joy is in trying. The joy is in the process that I'm gonna keep working, I'm gonna keep going at it. See, failure is forming my future. Failure is just another peg in the ladder for me to go higher. I don't 
don't want to just know how to make it work. I want to know why it doesn't work. And the only way I can find that out is I got to fall on my face. But guess what? The righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. And you can run faster with a hundred who want to go than with one around your neck. These people are bad for your health. Toxic relationships are relationships with people that always criticize you. All they can do is find fault. All they can do is just exploit your weaknesses. All they can do is remind you of the mistakes that you've made in the past. See, there are some people that aren't good for you. So you got to look at the people in your life and find out what kind of person are you becoming because of that relationship. Birds of a feather flock together. You run around with losers, you will end up a loser. You're doing the best you can, but you put one foot forward and two steps are made back. You're trying, but things don't seem to be quite working out the way you plan. You thought you'd be in a different place at this season in your life. You're doing everything right, but you're still suffering. The way you enjoy life best is to wrap up one goal and start right on the next one. Don't linger too long at the table of success. The only way to enjoy another meal is to get hungry. Another thing to check for on your list is that you have included goals for each of these three important categories. First, make certain your list includes material items you want, such as a home, furniture, a car, or jewelry. Don't attach the wrong importance to things, but they are important. Make sure you've listed your economic goals, your goals for income, profits, and productivity. Third, you'll want to include on your list goals for personal development. Your goal is to be more physically fit, to lose weight, to be a more effective leader, to be more decisive, to be a better communicator, to learn another language. Of course, there are other types of goals to consider, social goals, family goals, lifestyle goals. This is pretty heavy homework, but remember, whether or not you do your homework shows up in the marketplace as well as in the classroom. There's nothing in this world that can defeat us if God is for us. And if God be for us, who can be against us? It is impossible to have victory and think bondage. It's impossible to be happy and think sadness and depression. When I'm discouraged, I need somebody to come alongside me to encourage me that weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning. That kind of talk wakes up my faith. It stirs my faith to know that no matter how dark my situation, God can work it out. Most of y'all are able to say you don't like your friends. You don't trust them. They tell all of your deep, dark secrets. So why are they still there? Because you go to sleep at night doesn't mean that you're resting. See, I realized if your life and the people that you have in your life creates nightmares for your life. What makes you think that because you're going to sleep that your mind is going to stop? The nightmares that you're having while you're awake, you're witnessing nightmares. Drama, dysfunction, negative people, you consuming your life. It's like, oh, there's negative dysfunction and drama. You're going to walk into the direction of dysfunction and nightmares. I'm encouraging you to be mindful and be deliberate of what you let in your mind. Be concerned about what's going on and do the things necessary that keeps you out of harm's way. But don't be consumed with it. So make up your mind to watch something that inspire you, that lift you up as you rethink your life in self-examination. It's essential to set aside some time every week to review all of your goals redo them, restructure them, to add goals, or to tear up the whole list and start over. Goal setting is not something you do just once. It's a continual process. Also, you must constantly check your progress toward your goals. You don't want to fall too far behind on, or worse, lose sight of, your important goals. Now, just as important as your long-range goals are your short-range goals. Your goals for tomorrow, next week, next month. These are goals you can accomplish within the next year, the immediate future. We call these goals confidence builders. When you work hard, burn the midnight oil and accomplish these little things, it builds your confidence to go for your long range goals. Write down in your notebook or journal 
all the little things you would like to have or accomplish in the next year. How you set up this list is up to you. You might want to break it down by week or by month. Set it up in whatever way works well for you. Part of the fun of having a list is being able to check off something as obtained or completed. Every week, try to check off at least one thing on your list of short-term goals. And when you are able to check off something major, something on your list of long-range goals, celebrate. Congratulate yourself. Make winning joyful. It is very important to celebrate progress. We grow from two experiences. One is the joy of winning, and the other is the pain of losing. Here's what that also means. Make losing painful. Put it on yourself. If you set something up, fooled around, didn't pull it off, put it on yourself. And get around people who will help in this area. Hey, don't join an easy crowd. Go where the expectations are high, where the pressure to perform is high. It's how we grow. Somebody needs to know today you're going to make it. Somebody needs to know today you're doing all right. You may not be what you ought to be, but you're not what you used to be. And you're going to get there by God's grace. Don't you give up. Don't you quit. And don't you keep putting yourself down. You're doing better than you think you are. You lay in the bed wrestling with ghosts of what ifs and maybes and suppose and I think and I heard and I felt and you wake up tired in the morning because you, you might have slept but you didn't rest because all in your sleep you've been fighting. Most people are living their lives from a heart place and not a head place. They are so engrossed with what the heart feels that they have not covered what the head thinks. Most people are governed by their emotions. We all need associations with people of substance to provide influence concerning major issues, society, money, love, culture, friendship, taste, enterprise, family, opportunity, community. Behavior is mostly influenced by ideas, and ideas are mostly influenced by education, and education is mostly influenced by the people with whom we associate. So don't join an easy crowd. Make sure you get around people who can ask the right questions about the latest ideas you've discovered, about your philosophy, your enterprise, your goals, your lifestyle. Go where the demands are high, where the spotlight is on to grow, where the expectations are high, to produce and to become more than you currently are. This is time to look at the relationships in your life and ask the question, what kind of person am I becoming because of this relationship? Am I growing mentally and emotionally and spiritually? Am I becoming a better person because of this relationship? Is it an asset to me or a liability? Everybody has something that strikes terror in them to do it. Whatever you got hurt at, whatever you got damaged in, is the thing that just troubles you. Those strong holes come against you every time you try to move outside of your little prison. And people think you are angry, but the anger is the fruit. The root is the fear. Most angry people are scared. Pull it by the roots. Strong holes. Casting down imaginations. Envisioning self-destruction. The enemy terrorizing you with what he might do. That storm that you're in, it seems like that storm is enveloping the whole world. Hard to see out of that storm. It's hard to see past it. It seems like the storm is everything. You can get out of the storm and you will get out of the storm. But right now, you're being tried. You're being tested by fire and by pain. Don't fail the test. Measurable progress and having someone to monitor that progress. I will never forget my first list of goals that I put together. My list contained only four or five items. When I showed it to him, he said, is this your list? I said, yes. Then he started asking those very wise questions. How about your health goal? I didn't have any of those on my list. He asked, how about your investment goals? Those were lacking. Your family goals. How about your travel goals? How about your goals for gifts and sharing? 
What would you like to become? Who would you like to meet? What skills would you like to develop? Did you ever want to write a book, a poem? Would you like to be a sophisticated person of power and influence and culture? Would you like to be debt free? How about education for your children? How about a splendid library stocked with the best of books? Would you like to see New York? Visit Paris? Explore Rome? Would you like to make some new friends? Did you ever want to parachute out of an airplane? Do you need a ranch someday? A cabin in the mountains? Is there something you'd like to prove? A mark you'd like to make? I've resolved in my spirit that every experience is my education. So the good experiences and the bad experiences, I'm going to learn from that and I'm going to discover the opportunity for me to grow and for me to get better. I'm telling you, I've already made up my mind that I know I will fall down. I know that I will stumble, but I already see myself getting back up. Therefore, I'm never down. I'm either up or getting back up. I'm going to learn. How much do you love yourself? You don't trust them, so why are they still there? So if you get rid of these things, people, and situations now, you get rid of the nightmares now, they're not going to have anything new to spread about you. You're in the new season of your life. I want you to win. I want you to get to the next level. You need to change your mind because some of you are thinking about giving up because you're in a season of failure. But just because you failed doesn't mean that God doesn't have a bright future in store for you. It is always too soon to quit. Remember, major keys to your better future are going to be ideas and information. If we have any lack, it is not because we lack money or opportunity or resources. It is because we lack ideas that have taken form from information. If you search, you will find. So that is the way to discover ideas and life-changing information. Search. In order to find, you must search. You must go and engage in conversations with people of substance. You must go looking, go searching. Rarely does a good idea interrupt you. And as you make a diligent search, you will find just the ideas you need. How do I get like a six-pack quick? What's the best, fastest way to get a six-pack? Why does it have to be quick? Why does it have to be easy? Why do you think life is all quick and easy? Why can't it be hard and difficult? Why can't you suffer? Because suffering is what gives it value. If everyone had a six pack and it's quick and easy, then it wouldn't be valuable, would it? If everyone walked around with a quick six pack and they bought it easy, no one would give it. The whole point is that it's difficult to get. Value is linked to difficulty. If you want something that is valuable, you need something which is difficult to obtain. You shouldn't be thinking about quick and easy. You should think about hard, suffering, pain, going through it. That's what you should be thinking about. This is going to be hard, but I'm going to do it anyway. Because when it is done, then everyone's going to know that I went through something difficult. Talk to people who say, I want to quit smoking. They say, when? You all will soon. Well, that means you don't want to quit. You want to keep smoking for a while and quit later. I can't imagine a mind frame or a mindset where I want to do something and can't do it. It's almost difficult for you to answer that question because if you have that kind of mind, if your mind is so fundamentally broken that you cannot do with your own mind what you want to do, if you have a mind that you can't control, then you're never going to be a king. That's the point where you sit and go, okay, you're my friends, et cetera, et cetera. I love you guys. Yeah, we can talk, whatever. But I want a different life path. You have to leave some people behind. And I say that people laugh. I'm not joking. When I, I'm more in money, like, but I need an heir. When you're older, your life quality seriously increases massively. So you have about 10 to 15, maybe 20 years to find a way to get rich and enjoy being rich. You've got to put it all together and it quick. But if I'm depressed and, it's, and, it's, and I have no girlfriend and it's hard to make money and, and my life's hard, you were to tell them all your stupid reasons that you don't like your life. They'd sit there and listen to them all and go, okay, yeah, no problem, let's swap. And they'd sign on the dot line. Because they understand what real is. They have genuine issues. You don't have any issues. You have no real fucking issues. Your life is good. Someone would do anything to be real. If you understand that and you understand that completely, then it's very easy to be grateful for what you have. By extension, it's very easy. My attitude is very, very simple. I cannot remember the last time anything good in my life ever, ever, ever came without me working my ass off. Ever. If you want to be happy, go earn it. Go tell me what. I'm unhappy. Okay, what would make you happy? This, this, this. Go get it. Oh, I don't know how. Uh, so you're not unhappy. What you are is lazy. So you confused the two. Because I knew I needed to be a millionaire and a kickboxing world champion. And I knew I needed a drop-top Lambo, 10 million in the back to be happy. I knew what I needed and I got it. 
So it's it's down to what if you really want to get it or not. Anger is a fantastic force. You take that anger and you direct it in the correct direction. And listen, you may be feel fired up for 10 minutes after this little talk. You're not going to feel fired up forever. You need to put systems in place. You need to get discipline. You need to get an atmosphere of people around you who are going to keep you accountable and not make it easy for you to continue to be a fucking nobody. And then you're going to fix your life. Otherwise, you're going to stay a nobody.